Okay, here we are back on the stagecoach, and right now what we're working on is the suspension system for the coach itself. It consists of three pieces of wood glued together to make what is probably buffalo hide strapping on the real thing. It needs to be glued together in such a way that's curved. Then there's brackets to make up paint and then everything needs to be assembled. So the first thing I need to do is make these um, straps. Three pieces of wood that are one by six by 253 millimeters. And to do this, first thing I do is take one of my strips and give it a mark at 253 millimeters or thereabouts. That way I know how long it should be, but I don't cut it off. And all three of these I can go ahead and glue together and make sure I get a curve in them, the proper diameter. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start gluing these up. This is the one I have my mark on. I'm going to come back, I'm going to glue the back side of this one past my mark. about how much glue as long as you got some squeeze out and it gets all these things glued together. I'm just using tight bond wood glue for this. Would not recommend using an instant glue. I'd recommend using something that's slow cure like a wood glue. So I can take next layer and put on it. I'm lining up one end and give it a little bit of squeeze together and then I come through and do my next layer. You want to make sure this is going to be soft enough or the glue is going to be soft long enough for you to clamp it up. So you might want to put glue on two of them and then stack and then clamp them if you're concerned about it. That's the second one. Glue it up, or just put them together. Take a nice strong clamp and put on one end. Make sure everything's lined up. Then you can take your drawing picture, and by the way, this is not to scale. So this one to one, it's actually a little bit bigger. But then you can come and look at it and see about what it needs to look for your curve. So I'm looking at. If you're on the camera, I'm looking at this one right here. Figure out what I need for the curve. I'll come back and clamp the other end. Now you notice they're all separate here. So you're just going to need to take a whole bunch more clamps and go along here. I do mean a lot of them working from one end to the other. And you're going to find that you're going to have some weirdness to it. Just give it a flex. Things will slide in these clamps because they don't clamp as tight. These spring clamps here are really strong so it's not going to slide in those. Come back. I want to Turn that one. That way I can let it sit upright. So now you can sit here and do some final adjustments, let things slide where they need to be. You hold it against your pitcher again, make sure it looks about right, and let that sit realistically, let it sit overnight. Let it get good and solid. Once this is dry, you take all the clamps on, it will still have that curve in it. It's not going to go anywhere once it's glued up or once it's dry. Set it aside, let it dry. I 
Now that's strong, I can turn my attention to turn my attention to, to step 17, which is talking about the actual um, bounce for the shackles. Those are made out of two parts each. Let me get some something better background here. They're made out of two parts each. One part has a leg on it, the other part does not. We also need a bracket to go around it, which I've already bent up. It's just a piece of the flat stock bent up so it goes around both of these together. One thing you want to make sure you do is put your bread put your clamps on these brackets first before doing anything or bend them around after everything's assembled and make sure you're building a left and a right for one side the nailing hole should be in opposite directions one will be for the front one will be for the back so i guess you should be able to front and back and then the parts that don't have the little t on it we'll get a the top bent over i'm just using some jeweler's pliers for that so I can just grab them, bend them over, but since these pliers are tapered, I bend a little bit from one direction, a little bit from the other side. That way I can get it fairly straight. Now one thing to keep in mind on this is once you bend those around, oh, they need to fit around the, what is one or one and a half millimeter pin. That'd be what it is. So as you bend them around, make sure they fit around this pin. Otherwise, you're going to be hating yourself once you get it onto the, the stage coach and trying to get everything together. I just get the bend started and I come back and bend it around. That way it's in there and it's the right size. You can come back, close it up a little bit, test your fit. And it should be a pretty snug fit. Something like that. And then your other piece here. Is going to get the same kind of curl on it. It's going to be just a little bit bigger. You can come in, lock them together, and bend the top one shut over the, the outer one shut over the inner one. So you end up with something like that. These are going to get painted yellow, and then there's going to be a shape to them, where the top is curled and the bottom kind of gets curled back because this has to go around a piece of wood on the, the frame and this is where your strap will go. You just play with it get, get so it looks nice. Does it have to be perfect at this point in time you're going to do final adjustments when you put it on the stagecoach. <coughs> so I'm going to get that done on the other side here and get them painted and come back okay so i have the one strap on one side done to go the clamps off you see it still holds its curve next thing to do that on this is to add the loops on the end brackets on the end as well as if i can get out of the container here Two bands that go around it. There's also in here, if I get my tweezers out that'll help, two pins that we need to use to simulate the U-bolts uh, that go through. So 
these brackets will go on or just bent around into a half loop essentially kind of but when you do you want to make sure that this pin this 1.5 millimeter rod can still fit in it just like we do on the other end so we bend it around see how it looks so you need to go that way a little bit I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get these ends lined up so when I do my holes through they'll be lined up as well but then this thing here is just going to go onto the end like this and there's going to be a lot of space up top here for the pin to go through and everything so that's just going to go on and then I can take my small drill start drilling the holes I'll do that with a pin vise here and if you've got it lined up you'll see your drill comes out the other side as well So I'll do one hole, stick a pin through it, just to hold it in place. And I'll come and I'll drill the other, the next hole that this essentially U-bolt would go through. pin out and I'm going to make the U-bolt just by bending it around just eyeball it but, <coughs> excuse me and with any luck it will fit in so we get something like that Mine's a little off center, but I don't think it'll be noticeable. Do the same thing with the other one, and then the other end. In the meantime, in the meantime, there are these two metal bands to put on still. So I'll get those on real quick on this end, and I'll finish this rest up off off camera. These things are the one by three millimeter or the three millimeter wide banding that come up and you can bend one side of it to the thickness of the wood here so it'll fit on. I try to put the seam at the bottom so you can wrap it around with it in place and come to start bending this other end around. But before closing it up, I'm going to kind of make sure you get the right distance. It should be 16 millimeters from this bracket. Which is about where I'm at right there. Get on. Bend it over. And the other one you do the same thing on. Here. 
This bend is a little bit too short, but I'm not going to rebel and make sure it goes on the inside edge. That one should be six millimeters from the first one. So once I get it in place, give it a little tap, you tap to tighten stuff down, hopefully I'll keep it tight. And this will all get painted, painted black as well. So I'll finish this up, get painted black, and we'll come back to it. So there's that last piece, the strapping with everything on it, painted and ready to go. Next step is to, if I can find them here, attach these brackets with these rods to the uh, chassis of the stagecoach. Excuse me. I haven't painted these yet. I'll paint them when they're, once they're in place and the final shaping done because the paint will scrape off the metal real easy. So I'll paint them in place, get them shaped, and then coat them with a clear coat to hold the metal with the paint in place. So I have a piece right here. Let me cut off. So I've already done the one side here. You can see how they're in place. Get out here a little bit. Um, you put it in place, you want to make sure that this tab faces out towards the wheel. Which is why you have to make sure you get stuff set up correctly when you make them. Uh, when I put them on the other side, I had to make sure it's got kind of low so I can get all three nails in place. And the nails, if I can find my drills, there they are. I pre-drill and stick the nails in place. A little bit of glue on the end of them usually if they're loose. If they're not loose then they're fine being just driven in. And usually what I do is I'll take the part, put it in place. So this light's not in the right spot. Take the part, put it in place. And I'll drill one nail, stick it in, then I'll drill the other two. So I'll get that done, we'll come back, I'll get all both these in place, we'll come back and deal with these bars. So here we are, the uh, wagon part, of the frame chassis part of the stagecoach is pretty much done. Still need to do my touch-up paints over on this side for the uh, strap and stuff. Got these rods in, did those off camera because the only thing you could see is the back of my hands and if you've been watching my stuff long enough, you already know what the back of my hands looks like. They're just a couple of brass rods, rods flattened on them, bent on one end with a hole drilled in them and then they're just attached in and glued into place anyway. That's what it looks like. Um, one thing I would like to see done differently is in here where you have this curved bar on the front where it goes in place. I think that curved bar is supposed to be riding on this piece of wood here, but it doesn't until I guess until the front's turned a bit. I think that's just a design flaw in how the kit was designed. In reality the hounds probably should be longer or this bar should be further back or something. Or there should be a second bar here. But it is what it is, and I'm pleased with it. Another thing that should happen is that these haul bars should be a little bit forward from where they are, because where they are right now, they would rub on the wheels of a horse's toe in the stagecoach. I might just add a second link in to move it out a little bit, but I think this bar actually needs to be about... i uh, just get some pointer, pointer here. I think this bar here needs to be about right here. Just to bring, or even with the front of the wheels or something, just to bring the haul bars out front. I think it's pretty good. I, I think it looks pretty good. It's going to be one of those little niggling details that will get lost in the rest of the, the model when it's done. So with that, I'm, I'll get these touch up done. I'll do that off camera and the next time when we meet, we'll be starting, I'll be starting the uh, actual coach part of it. I already have my parts 
staged out here for both sides the bottom top pieces a couple of beams and the full wrap around so i'm looking forward to getting that started but in the meantime thank you for watching and i'll see you next time